As we look at physiologic strains of the cranium, specifically at the SBS, we talk about torsions or side bending rotations. Again, these are both physiologic and they have different axes and planes of motion. So first we will look at a torsion. Torsions occur around one AP axis. So there's just one axis running through the sphenoid and the occiput. And what we find is that the sphenoid and the occiput are rotating in opposite directions around that AP axis. So let me show you how that would look. So we're going to make this our axis. Here's our sphenoid and our occiput. And again, remember we're always naming it for what's going on at the base here. So here we have, let's say for example, we're going to do a right side, excuse me, a right torsion. We have the sphenoid rotating this way and the occiput rotating this way. So they're rotating opposite ways around this one axis. Why do we call this a right torsion? Well, what we want to do here is if we put a point directly on the other side of this basal sphenoid, we would see that it's rotating to the right. So again, we're calling this a right torsion. And how would this feel? Well, if you remember that our index fingers are on the greater wings of the sphenoid, and we're saying this one is moving this way, you can see that my right greater wing of the sphenoid is re relatively superior. So sometimes we say the greater wing of the sphenoid is superior. That might be how it feels, but remember it's really about what's going on at the base here. And what's going on, so if this is moving to the right, and this is moving in an opposite direction, then if we look down here at the base, um, at, at the great, at the squama rather, the squama of the occiput, we feel our uh, index, excuse me, our uh, pinky moving more inferiorly. So to put those together, if on my right side I'm feeling my right index superior and my right pinky inferior, this is what it's feeling like. Sometimes we tend to call this a six-shooter kind of action here. So this would be our right torsion. Now we're going to go and look at the side bending, uh, the side bending rotations. On a side bending rotation, we're talking about three axes. One longitudinal axis, the same axis that we just discussed, going through the SBS from front to back. But then two vertical parallel axes, one through the foramen and one through the body of the sphenoid. So how might that look? Here's our AP axis. And then as we look at this here, one axis will be coming directly down through here and one down here through the foramen. Rotation is going to be in opposite directions along these vertical parallel axes and in the same direction around this one AP axis. So we could either talk about the side bending or the rotation, but first let's talk about the vertical axes. So, in a right side bending rotation, it's going to look like this. The sphenoid is going to rotate in this direction, the occiput in the opposite direction. And then, this being the right hand side, both of these are going to rotate around this axis here in the same direction. So, right side, side bending rotation is going to look like this. Rotation and dumping out. So here, you could think about naming this for the side of the, the, the fullness of the head and for the side that the both occiput and sphenoid, occiput and sphenoid tend to drop to. So it's named slightly differently than they were in, in, um, in that torsion, okay? Sometimes we call this the cracking of the egg technique. If you think about cracking an egg on the side of a bowl, you kind of crack it, open it up, and dump it into the bowl and dump, and that's your right side bending rotation. So again, how might that feel? If we remember our, gr our fingers on the greater wing of the sphenoid, on the squama of the occiput, you can see as this moves, I'm going to have a sense of more fullness on this side, as opposed to in the neutral position here. 
rotation, I have a sense of fullness and of dropping on this right hand side. So how might this feel in my hands? I might feel fullness and an in inferior motion. More like this, fullness and an inferior motion. Fullness and an inferior motion on the side of the named dysfunction. Next, we will look at the non-physiologic strains. 